Hello, welcome back. So today we are diving into the heating side maintenance of this Lenox L series package rooftop unit, and uh, we're gonna walk you through every step of maintenance. And if we find any issues uh, during this maintenance, so we're gonna troubleshoot it and try to eliminate the problem. And we're gonna discuss every step in detail. And this is a big unit. If you see, we have two venter motor, and every venter motor or the heating circuit is like a more than 400 k BTU. So this is a big unit. Uh, this is serving to a, a car showroom reception site. So this is very important because the customer usually enter and discuss. So let's start again. First thing first, always disconnect the main power supply. I already disconnected it. It's a quarter turn. Next step, just uh, see the unit from outside if there is any issue and if we find any abnormality. So this is going to be the heating side. So we are not uh, uh, concentrating on the condenser coil and the next thing we're gonna open the filter section so I have already replaced the filter as you can see those are brand new filters and yeah the next thing we're gonna open the blower section Okay, so this is the blower section of this unit and first step We have to check the condition of this belt. So we have got a crack the big crack here if you can see So we need to replace the belt and second step check the tightness of this belt. So I I find it a little bit tight So we have to adjust the tightness of the new belt third step we have to check the uh, motor pulley and the blower pulley if there is any groove is formed inside if there is a uh, so right now is fine both pulleys are good in good conditions and this groove formation inside the pulley can cause the uh, motor to draw the more amps and whenever we see the grooves or feel the groove so it's time to replace the pulley next step so as we can see these bearings there is a, a grease nipple there so the grease can be applied to this bearing so one is here the second one is on the other side so we have to apply the grease on both bearings so how we can do how, can, how we can reach to the other side of the bearing so the Lenox they have a better design so we have to remove this screw uh, not, not this screw 3-8 screw and we can pull the whole blower section with the motor so it can so it can be slide down so every time I slide every time I pull I apply the grease here on both sections so so, so the next time it will be easier and same time we can check the condition of uh, our heat exchanger if we pull the whole blower section to the outside and the next step and last step so we have to check the condition of the wire if any wire is uh, damaged or in tension so we have to do some correction on that Okay, so we're going to replace the belt and uh, in this case, so we're going to replace the belt and adjust the tension. So I have replaced the belt. As, uh, as you can see, it is very tight. So we have to adjust the tension. So for this, we can see these two bolts here. We have to loosen these two bolts. And, and to adjust the tension, these two bolts, the, we have to another two bolts so we have to rotate them simultaneously and equally so if we are rotating it like a quad give it a quarter turn and the second uh, the same we have to give the quarter turn to the second one 
so that the pulley will not be like uh, angled and uh, once we find a better tension we can lock these two bolts tight tight these two bolts and in this manner the, the tightness on this unit can be adjusted okay so i have adjusted the tension now it's looking okay and so in this section we have this switch here is a high limit and the another one is right there so two high limits so which is related to the heating safety and so next thing we're gonna move around into the electrical section okay so this is the main electrical section of this rooftop and as we can see we had a generation first broad edge board control board and the thermostat is calling for heat and right now the unit is working on heating mode so we have adjusted the belt tension of the uh, lower motor pulley and if we can see we, this unit has three compressor and those three co contactor are for this compressor and this contactor is for as you can see the wires are going to the other side of or back section of the electrical section back side so this is the blower or they also have a label there it says uh, contactor blower so we're going to check the amps so we're going to put our multimeter into the ampere setting and now if you just carefully clamp it So it is drawing 2.67 something amps and we have to check this reading as per the label. Okay so this is the spec label and if we check this is an evaporator motor this is 3 HP motor and this is 3.9 FLA so full load amps i think that's the full full meaning of this fla so this is 3.9 and we are drawing right now 2.7 so we are good okay so as the unit was running we have an alarm here alarm 68 heat to no proof gas wall free so we have a problem with this this gas valve as you can see it is off but this phase is running fine okay so there is no alarm list available for the prodigy board on the unit label inside so we have to download this prodigy linux prodigy app and this is the generation one so we going to collect the first one and here look up alarm prodigy first that was i think a68 done we search well invalid let's check one more time okay so sorry it was 068 okay so here is the detail the heating to no proof of flame gas valve 2 ignition module has failed to energize gas valve 2 minimum after a heating demand output from main controller p266 something so so this is related to the gas valve number 2 so which is coming on and off so i think uh, it has some issues so to find out uh, alarm related to the prodigy we have to download this prodigy app lenox prodigy app and just enter the alarm code and we will find the detail okay so we are we have a bad gas valve so for the precaution side we have to replace it we're going to recommend that customer to replace the gas valve because it's coming on and off on and off and giving the alarm on the prodigy board 
Now the next thing, the next thing we have to check this play broad and simply we have to take it out and clean it and check the micro amps reading. Okay, so I have removed this flame sensor wire from the flame sensor and I have put one probe of my multimeter into this wire which is going to the control board or ignition module and I have put my multimeter into the micro amp setting and now we're gonna turn on the unit into the heat mode and we'll see what reading us are we are, we are receiving here. Okay, so right now the reading is showing 3.8, 3.94 micro amps. So that's how we can check the flame sensor if it is okay or not. And the same, this is the same principle we can apply to all kind of heating which are having a flame rod or flame sensor. Appliances like a boiler or furnace or big rooftop which are having a flame rod, so it's the same principle to test the flame sensor. Okay, so there is one more important thing to consider. If you see, this is our igniter, which is at the first burner, and the flame sensor in is located on the last, last of the burner. So this flame sensor ensures that if we have ignition, the flame is traveling through this uh, this narrow passes uh, from first burner to the last of burner and if if we have flame on the last burner then it will uh, continue to will continue to send the signal flame a micro amp signal to the control board and we will have the ignition going on up to the heating heating uh, thermostat is satisfied okay for the demonstration purpose I have removed one of one burner and I just wanted to show you this is the narrow path I was uh, discussing so the flame travels through this narrow path from first burner to the last burner and if sometime we I have we have seen the issues like the flame is uh, the the flame is ignited up to half of the burner or few of the burner but not going all the way to the last burner so this is the issue then so we have to clean this narrow path and it should be free from the dust rust and everything all the thing inside so this is a part of the major heating maintenance okay so we are back here to replace our gas valve so we're gonna replace the second gas valve here and first thing first, I have disconnected the power and turned off the gas supply. Okay, so this is our new gas valve and very important to check the directions. So this will go like this. So the main gas supply is coming through this pipe and direction should be downward. It's going to be like this and also remove this cap okay so we have installed the new gas valve and always remember to put the pipe dope on the threads on the fittings here here and simply we can just hook up this uh, connector wire connector here So since we have replaced the gas valve, so it is very very important to check the outgoing pressure, gas pressure to our gas manifold. So we are going to hook up our manometer uh, on this side of the dust valve and check the gas pressure. Okay so I have hooked up uh, my gas manometer fitting to the manifold side of gas valve test port and the other into my manometer the unit should be inches of water column inches of water column and 
before testing anything just zero it out so now we're gonna check our spec what are the high fire and low fire pressure okay so this is our main label and this is our BTU and this is first gas valve high fire 3.7 low fire 1.6 and this is second gas valve which we're gonna test it today 3.4 and 1.6 so these are high fire and low fire readings okay I have set uh, the heat 3 mode and now this is the only motor battery motor is running this is not running and we will have ignition in few seconds and then we will see what is the pressure it is 1.7 I think it's the low fire so looks like within the spec Okay, now, now we're gonna test on the full mood. Okay, we will have ignition in few seconds. So 1.6 was for the low fire, and for high fire, it was saying it should be approximately 3.4 water column into water column. So now full heat mode. Yes, so 3.46. So the new gas valve is in within the spec. <coughs> so we are good. But if there is any kind of variation, so these are the setting ports here. If you see, it says high and I think low. Yes, low. So which can be adjusted with the Allen key very important to match the gas pressure and very very important whenever we are doing the maintenance on heating side is to check the temperature rise so if we see the label this is the range 40 to 70 degree Fahrenheit so our temperature rise should be within this range so what is temperature rise so the Prodigy board we can read the temperature it is showing DAT means delivery air temperature or discharge air temperature 101 but right now the unit is off it just turned off I think the thermostat was satisfied so R80 return air temperature 84 so it was within the spec and So that was it for today's video thank you for watching let me know if you have any suggestions thank you see you next time